Last but certainly not least, the defensive coordinator, Logan Paulson. Uh, you got Joey Jr. in Washington, Mike Zimmer back on the horn in Dallas, Shane Bowen comes from Tennessee to New York, and the legendary Vic Fangio in Philadelphia. Um, interesting group. Very varied resumes. Uh, yeah. They're all new. So yeah. good luck with that. How'd your tape study go of a bunch of new guys? It's just, they're all good, man. Like, you know, I had to go back to 2019 to watch uh, Zimmer stuff. You know, and they're like this quarters-based defense. And then like the stuff that they do. And, you know, so like that's one thing they need, right? They need really good safety play. And what does Dallas have? They have a bunch of good safeties that can play in the box, can play in that quarters role. They're not in the true post. I thought, oh man, that's going to be a nice fit for him. And then the way they disguise stuff on third down with kind of that double A package where it's like, are we in man? Are we in two man? Are we bringing all out? Are we in one plug? And for them to be able to get there. So like on paper, like if you're just saying pen to paper, like who does the coolest stuff? It's probably Zimmer. You know, he's just got this crazy like, oh, we're going to get in the zone pressure. We're going to have the middle guy read the quarterback's eyes. We're going to not even cover this concept over here and and just rely on the, you know, you're just like, this is like high level stuff. And it felt watching it, especially considering it was 2019, like it was a little bit ahead of the curve. And like, that's kind of what you see, um, you know, San Francisco 49ers running now is like this quarters defensive base, right? Which is, was out of vogue for a while. And like now it's back in and I kind of, and then the third down package that they're running in 2019 is very similar to what Dan was running last year when he was and Joe Wood Jr. were running when they were in Dallas. So on paper, it's probably, he does the most kind of interesting stuff, the most challenging stuff in terms of disguises and things like that. But Vic Fangio, man, like the defenses aren't overly complex, but the rules per concepts are very nuanced. And for him to get those guys coached up really well and to get them playing on the same page, I think can't be overstated. You know, they had the best defense and, and he coached the best defense in like the last 15 years in 2018. Like one of the, you know what I'm saying? Like he's he's a guy that does a great job. And the other thing I wanted to point out, which I think is extremely important, is that like these guys do well when they have good personnel, right? And so like, I think Dallas' defense is good. But I think Vic Fangio with the personnel in Philly is going to be an absolute nightmare. Like, I, I just think, like, the way they play their 3-4 base structure, so three defensive linemen, kind of those stand-up edge players, and I'm like, oh, they just brought in um, – <clears throat> Bryce Excuse Huff. me. Bryce Huff. They brought that kid in from uh, Nolan Smith from Georgia, who's, like, this perfect stand-up end. They've got uh, Sweat there. They've got these great interior players. They've got – you know, another thing that they've done is they've kind of prioritized the role of that nickel player – in the defense and they go out and they draft, you know, maybe the best nickel player um, in Cooper DeGene. Obviously it's got to pan out for him. But I was just like, if there was a guy that I was this going into the best situation that kind of fits what he likes to do. I mean, Vic Fangio is really high on the list. So from a paper standpoint, I'd probably say, you know, it's Zimmer Fangio. I think the fit there is so natural for him. I think Shane Bowen does a great job, you know, again, kind of from this, Romeo Cornell background where it's quarters. We got a lot of split safety. We do a great job being aggressive to the football, coaching kind of an identity. And then I love what Joe Witt does. I love it. You know what I'm saying? So I think there's elements that all these guys do a really good job of. And I do think the fit here is really nice. Um, I just wonder about the personnel here for Joe Witt. I just think like the personnel in Philly, like when you look at it, it's like if I, and again, he, he's a smart man, like uh, Vic Fangio. He's going to pick a job where the personnel is going to be the best for him. And I just felt like there couldn't be a more natural fit from a personnel standpoint. And then you look at Zimmer and what he does schematically. I don't know. It's it, it basically long story short. It's tough to kind of say this guy is better than this guy. I think it comes down ultimately to the personnel and buy-in. And so if you're going to rate it on personnel, you say Philly. If you're going to rate it on buy-in, I think Dan and Joe are going to do a great job creating buy-in here. Um, so really it's kind of up in the air, but schematically they all do stuff that's really fun to watch and really innovative. And so I think like defensive, uh, defense in this division next year is going to be pretty, uh, pretty fun to watch. That is uh really insightful and terrible for a ranking show. I know. It's just like, I don't, I, I couldn't, I, I'd probably, if I had a gun to my head, I'm going to say Vic Fangio just because this fit is so good. I'll say Zimmer yeah. as two. I'll say Joe Witt just because I trust Dan and I trust what that defense did in Dallas. And I do think he's going to maximize the personnel here, specifically the secondary. And then Shane Bowen, 
partially because the, the, the defense, while always very good wherever he's been, is a little bit vanilla and a little bit kind of in the Patriots way of like, we're going to game plan each week for you. And I think that can be really challenging to be successful at, especially if, especially you, don't have great if you don't have the personnel. Like yeah. I don't have and, the horses to do and again, anything really well in New York right now defensively. Outside that defensive of defensive lines. The defensive yeah. line I'm excited about, but I do think how does the secondary handle that stuff? They have right. the linebackers to do it, but I do think how does that kind of matriculate and progress that back end group, which played basically man exclusively last year. So now you're going to be asked to do a lot more different stuff. How does that pan out for you? And maybe it does. Maybe the, the secondary is way better than we know. And they just were playing bad coverages last year. Um, and we know that uh, they were exposed because uh, Wink, that's what he does. He's like, we're going to we're, we're gonna expose uh, our secondary, but it comes with a, a reward right. upside. There's a risk reward there that was more skewed towards the risk than, than perhaps anybody else uh, in football the last two decades, uh, the way Wink Martindale does it. Um, but yeah, I... It's tough because yeah. Wits a first time you know to try to add some wrinkles here. The the one uh not concerning, but like the one thing that, that is the biggest unknown with Joey Jr. is he's never been a play caller before. Mm -hmm. And so at least Zimmer, Bowen, Fangio, like they've been play callers, they've had the live bullets, they know, okay, in this situation I've I've been here before. I want this. I have some kind of memory bank of experience. Sure. And for Joey Jr., he doesn't have that yet. Certainly when you're, you know, you're a position coach, like you're thinking about that stuff. You're kind of mentally preparing. You're you're anticipating, hey, what am I gonna have to do for my part of this based off the upcoming play call? So you're guessing, but it's different when you gotta actually do it in the game. Um, so that is one thing that feels worth pointing out, but still, yeah, even absolutely. then, like um, I I think they're going to have great game plans. I think they're going to be extraordinarily prepared, um, both this, as a staff and Joe Witt will be prepared for all those situations to call the right plays. Uh, and he'll have Dan as a resource, obviously, is about as good as you can get uh, in terms of what he's done as a defensive play caller over his entire career. But also they'll have the players prepared. And, and that, you know, putting Witt third or fourth feels like silly because then you're like, ah, oh, he's the worst. And it's like, yeah, that's a relative term. Um, I tend to agree with you, though. I, I think Zimmer and Fangio are probably 1A, 1B. Mm -hmm. And then uh, if that creates then the next person being third, uh, you have like 3A, 3B, uh, Bowen and Witt probably. Yeah. Um, and again, that's, like, that's kind of how I see it. I think the cool thing about all these guys is Fangio, his defense was a top 10 defense last year in Miami. They were third in sacks, you know, and he came into that on like a year. You know what I'm saying? Which is pretty yeah. impressive. And and for him to elevate that group in one year, obviously I was with him in Chicago and what he was able to do with those guys there is, is always just been crazy impressive to me. And again, on paper, when you watch it, it's a, it's a very similar defense, quite frankly, to what they ran. Philly ran last year to what Washington ran last year. But it's just you can tell the way he coaches. You know what I mean? The way he yeah. understands his defense, the way guys rally to certain things the way they check the way they communicate it's 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 really well done and um and like i said the zimmer thing is interesting because i think on paper he does like the the coolest stuff you know what i mean it's like oh this is it's like when you watch instagram and you're watching all these different offensive trick plays and stuff and and they're like man i want to put that in my offense he does that with defense um mm -hmm. and you can tell sometimes guys are a little bit confused they're not always the right spot but they play hard for him he's a good motivator i think another thing to point out he hasn't been coaching for what is it? It's been it's been a minute now. You know what I mean? Been a like, couple of years, yeah. So I think that's another thing that I would just be a little bit cautious about. I like what I saw from him in nineteen. I like what Vic does. Um, and again, I like Shane Bowen. And I think Shane, I think you have to give Shane Bowen a little bit of credit, honestly, because talk about making making something out of nothing. And I think when you look at what they did in Tennessee last year, like there wasn't a lot there. And for him yeah. to kind of they've been make that personnel for a couple of years. Yeah, make make that group productive. I think he deserves a lot of credit. But um, I, again, I, of the of the groups, this was the hardest one for me to kind of parse out because I think they're all very talented. I think they all do some really innovative stuff. It's just about kind of your flavor and then how they how they end up settling in with the head coach, with yeah. the offense that's going to support them, and then um, you know with the personnel. And I think that's why I got to give the edge to Vic because man, I just think that personnel is going to and again this is another reason to give Vic some credit is like I know Vic's going to come in and be like um Sirianni do not talk to me about anything defensively like I'm doing my thing and I think there is something to be said for having a strong-willed defensive or offensive coordinator that says this is my vision 
don't mess with it. You can give input, but I'm not, might not always take it. Like, this is my vision. And I think that's something that I know for sure he'll do. I know for sure um, uh, Zimmer will do. I have questions about Bowen going up with, uh, with Dayball because Dayball is such a strong personality. Like, how much input is he going to impart there? And again, like, that's why this is such a, all these rankings are so fun to do because it's like, it's on paper what they do, how they interact with these other groups, and how they interact with the personnel. For sure. All right. That is our show for this week, uh, or for today, I should say. We got one more holiday mailbag special for you coming on Thursday, but we need questions for said mailbag. Can't do a mailbag if the bag is empty. Uh, we need the mail to go in the bag, if you will. And by that, I mean tweets and Instagram DMs. So if you want, if you're more of an Instagrammer, uh, hit Logan at Logan underscore Paulson 82. Uh, if you prefer to tweet in your questions, uh, you can go at Craig Hoffman on Twitter. Uh, you can also go to HoffmanShow.com. Uh, there's a contact link and you can send me an email that way. If you are like, I don't do social media. Why do you guys always gear everything? We don't. We don't. Just go to HoffmanShow.com contact page and uh be like mailbag question here we go and we'll if your your question's good we'll answer it on on thursday so there you go uh in the meantime make sure you are subscribed and if you're looking for more things to listen to may i suggest uh humbly the hoffman show podcast uh the radio show that i do on the team 980 uh five days a week most weeks three this week because it's a holiday uh and every th every uh hour every minute of every show is available for you on demand we do a ton of commander stuff but also if you want your wizards fix etc etc uh definitely recommend checking that out uh for logan i am craig and we will see you next time on take command thanks for watching this clip of take command which has a brand new home that's right you can watch on youtube at the team 980 you can also listen to full episodes in the free odyssey app which is now enabled with apple carplay so we'll just you know follow you around. <laughs>